Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you're consuming this podcast. Welcome to Ionisms, a podcast about society, art, entertainment, culture, movies, pets, a little bit of geopolitics, and of course, a favorite cricket. As always, this is a simple, straight talk, slow burn. If this is something that floats your boat, then this is an episode you might want to put on your headphones, sit back and relax and listen to it. Give it a patient here. And you guessed it. We are going to discuss about the one day World Cup campaign. And more importantly, and, and you know, you might think, well, so much of it has been done and dusted and spoken about. What is it that we are going to do differently? Well, my goal is to touch upon not just the match, but you know, the 360 degree elements and components that surround it. And then share with you my views on how these elements impact a match, a predicament, a mindset, maybe perhaps an even an outcome, and so on and so forth. So it'll be a multi multiple components that I'll do a little bit of deep dive in. And I deliberately delayed airing this episode because I wanted to settle down with the emotions, make peace with the fact that you can never really get over it as a true cricket lover and true uh, admirer of Indian cricket. But the thing is, you have a Monday and you get on with life and you get refocus from one way or the other while you know, it's like this back burner thing which is in your mind and it keeps going. I, I guess that's how it's going to be. Can't do anything about it right now and so I'm not trying to process it so much that you know then we kind of think what else can could have been done and, and that kind of stuff right so making peace with it in some sense. So without further ado uh, let's jump right in. So couple of things so let me give you the outline we'll talk about not just the match the mindset the predicament the crowd the pitch the geopolitics of it the economics of it the economy angle to it the cultural aspect of it the international cross culture cross cultural impact of it so pick one or two points from each of these points uh, but right off the bat let's uh, zoom out completely and talk about are we ready this is with reference to global culture versus indian culture my question to you and i'd love to know some answers and thoughts are we as a country ready to align with how a uh, global culture is set I know this is a loaded statement. Now, there will be the counter nationalist argument that why should we, be, we become like how the world is? We are the way we are, and the world should become us, or world should get used to the way we are. I mean, I'll draw a parallel analogy in, with movies. There is Hollywood, which a lot of the other film producing nations try to emulate and raise the bar or maybe they are of similar style of thinking and all that. Indian movies and largely Hindi film movies, Bollywood in, in specific, has stubbornly retained its culture or the way or the style of masala that they wanted this is how we are this is what we are we are making movies for our consumption there is no global outlook to it and i'm making again a very broad big uh, statement here what they are saying is this is our culture and having you know balancing the artistry versus the star power there will be lots of fans and there's a generation of people who have gone on to uh, get used to that this is our culture. I'm going to go and praise the star. Yeah, the story and all these things can wait. It has to be an entertainment. Uh, there has to be romance, uh, song, drama, dance. And it's like a multiple genre 
kind of thing. That's who we are. Why should we be uni genre like say a classical Hollywood movie? That it's a thriller. There is no emotion, drama, comedy in that, or uh, you know something like. That. So they want to keep it linear in some sense. We are a masala, and so why not? What's there to be apologetic about it? What's there to be defensive about it? No need to do all that stuff. Right? So we are who we are. Reflecting back on the same mindset with cricket, you're saying this is who we are as a sporting nation. We will obsess about the stars, but uh, when it comes to our global culture, when we interact with a global audience, are we really getting a seat at the table? In the sense, the world is saying, if it, uh, the, another example would be, you're saying, my house is very big and your house is probably bigger or whatever, but we have to go to office. At office, there is a decor. Now, we can't go to office and say, in, in this instance, I mean, uh, say the global stage and say, I will get my home mindset to the office culture. In office, you have to maintain that decorum. So when you are at a global stage, should we not maintain a global standard of thinking, culture, behavior? Is that too much to ask? And even if you were to put that aside and probably leaning towards this is our identity and this is who we are and this is how we ought to be fair there is there's a lot of history to it there has been 250 years of colonialism there has been oppression there has been all that it's our time in the sun and if we are uh, emerging into our own identity it's a transition and people will take a very macro um, look at it and say yeah this is a transitory phase which is fine but the world is as we see it has moved on very rapidly in 2023 you're looking at a certain aspect of standard acceptable practices in sport take tennis take golf take football in competitive sport if the opposition plays well it is customary to appreciate a game well played a shot well made you have to appreciate that the other party is there to win they're just not there to make you f look good and so i'll start with the cultural question that all of uh, many of us have had is we are a rising superpower there is no denying that a lot you will hear and i'm sure you've already heard a lot of commentary around how India is a global economic giant and in three years time or four years time will be at number three and all that. How is that translating into the maturity of the average crowd? Every country will have the elite and the underprivileged, but we're talking about the majority of the average people in the middle, if you will, in the middle of the bell curve. Because that is the mass crowd. When you say the mass crowd from one region to another region, in a sporting event, do you find a lot of difference? Like in football, if Brazil is playing against Argentina or Germany playing against England, when there is a good play, there is fierce rivalry, fierce passion towards their team. But at the end of the match, both the supporters stand up and appreciate and clap. The stadium, I mean, I might be wrong, there's always an exception on internet that, oh, you said this, but you know, this happened. But the stadium would empty out when the opposition won. And the, probably the favorite team, the home team lost. It's not uncommon in sport. So sometimes I, when this was unfolding in Ahmedabad, I was thinking, are we culturally ready yet to be at the global stage? I guess that was a long, long way of saying it. Are we culturally ready to be at the office? Or are we saying, I don't know how to be at the office or in a formal environment? But a lot of the people now, I can understand, say, pre-90s, where there was limited travel or only a few could travel. Now the percentage of people who get an international exposure is significantly higher 
So they know how crowds behave. There's an element of maturity. There is an element of mutual respect. There's an element of appreciation. That hey, well played. You had a good day. Um, and we, in the name of passion, are we trading off compassion? Are we trading off respect for the game, respect for the player? Are we trading off the very cricketing sense that hey, somebody did well appreciate that there's nothing wrong in being emotive about your expression about your passion nothing wrong with it but it does not have to be at the cost of somebody else's demotion disrespect for lack of a better expression there so my first observation around the cultural impact of india in the global stage is was why is it that we are not growing and maturing as an audience? We have now had enough of international exposure playing different regions, South Africa, New Zealand, Australia, England. We follow cricket very closely. There's a bigger, deeper understanding at a street level, which is very good for the sport. But when it comes to collective presence in the crowd, my first observation was we are not yet comfortable acknowledging someone else doing well. And that worries me from a maturity, sport, sporting maturity standpoint. That said, there have been instances, and people cite the Chennai test, people cite the Chennai crowd on the pull that I got. And there have been mixed instances, uh, in, uh, instances where Kolkata crowd has behaved oddly and then very favorably and all that. The Hyderabad crowd was very well behaved. The Mumbai crowd always has been the cosmopolitan neutral crowd. But other than that, you, you, you largely get the impression that I only know my team. I only know, I only feel happy if they do well. I, and, and it's just me, 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 me. But as, as a, if you're a true sports lover, it's about the game. Right? And your knowledge of the game, your understanding of the game. So is it a fair assessment that the large part of the audience is there for entertainment versus appreciating the sport? You know, it's like the, they love the idea of falling in love, but they don't know the sacrifices that need to be made to be in love. And so, the parting comment on this first part is, are you ready to become a global citizen in sport? In At workplace, I'm sure you are already. But in, in, in sporting encounters, especially when the world is watching us, the world is, you, you got the world curious about us. Like, oh my God, behind this madness, there's some method. There's a reason why India is working. And that's a powerful statement. India is working. And how is it working? It is probably where the global world, the global powers that be are wondering that, oh my God, they are doing something which we don't get and we want to know. And when they do make that job, they realize that, well, there is a lot of chaos there. And culturally, it's very different from the rest of the world in general. So now we are a developing economy. In a few years, we should be a developed economy. Will we also culturally be as developed is the question to ask. Next point. Let's talk about the cricketing sense. And it's a subset of the... It's a subset of the uh, cultural divide. We all saw what reception Australia, Team Australia got on there. They took it as, yeah, if we win, great. If we don't win, that's okay. It's not that the sport is lesser loved. It was probably not even front page news in many places there. And half of the team is here. And, and yes, I know we can all blame it on the fact that this is how the boards have scheduled the matches and everything. But it also tells you that when you are fairly relaxed about it, when you know that everything is going to be against you, and you can't fight it out, you play with a sense of abandon. You, you just abandon your inhibitions. You just let your fears go away. And then when you start to play fear less cricket, then results are more favorable than unfavorable. 
And that's exactly what happened with Team Australia in my limited understanding of cricket, of course. They, they inspected the pitch, they saw the crowd, they saw the uh, way the whole tournament was you know, built around making sure that India gets all the importance and limelight. Even uh, there was a cultural show before India-Pakistan match. Almost to say that the rest of the teams don't matter. And they know that BCCI governs world cricket. They know that uh, everything. So they kind of, I guess, I, I don't know if I can use this word for a team like Australia. It's like rile them up. Like now there are 10 things against us. We can't do Jack Street about it. Let's not worry about that. Let's throw it out of the window. And then just go out there and worry about this 22 yards and the bat and the ball. And then we'll deal with it. And in the event, if we lose anyways, there are 10 things that were against us, genuine things, not as an excuse. And so I think somewhere they liberated their minds and that's where their tactical genius, psychological genius or analysis of this whole situation uh, helped them win the the final, the World Cup. I, I would not call it that they got lucky. I think I am hearing from some quarters, oh, this was just this one-off case where they just got lucky. Oh, but, you know, the, after they lost those two matches, you could see that they're sw getting switched on. And it was not like full-blown, like from first gear to fourth gear. So it's coming, it's coming. They're, because, you know, the, the if you notice some of the body language, the little bit of swag, a little bit of the banter started coming in. And you know, the guys are enjoying amongst themselves. Whereas Team India, albeit playing uh, you know, probably a Delta X better cricket, came across like a team on a mission. How to do that? Now, you would argue that what's wrong with that? What's wrong in being serious about your World Cup campaign? Uh, and, and, and Many people, especially the World Cup champions, will tell you this, that as much as you have to be determined to win it, you have to also be relaxed about it. Might sound very counterintuitive, I know. But the idea is to be comfortable with the journey uh, as much as the passion for it has to be there. You can win the World Cup getting into VK mode, as in the turbo charge, yeah, that kind of stuff. You can also win the World Cup in MS mode. We'll get there. So it really doesn't matter how you, if whatever clothes your boat, right? So from a tactical analytics standpoint, when the team realizes that there are so many things stacked up against you, they play free. And that freedom that they display as body language translates as pressure to the opposition. Like, hey, we are serious. What happened to them? Why are they just, I mean, is, is the pressure not affecting them? And so on and so forth. And that further compounds when maybe a period of play goes against you. Like a block off and the, the bowler has gotten into a rhythm. Uh, and, you know, it's probably out thinking you as a batter. Think of the Cummins uh, slow bouncer to Sky. But that was, he was out thinking the batter. Whereas what all Sky needed to do, and he was probably had hit panic mode by then, just the pressure of image that I am the swag master, and so I have to deliver outrageous shots. I'm not saying he probably thinks that it's my conjecture, but at the time the genius would have been to out counter, out think the bowler. So now that you know they are going to bowl the slower one instead of hard hitting, stay still, wait. Wait, wait, late, late, late. So that would have outthink, outthunk the, the border. Missed opportunity. Likewise, if when you know somebody of the tempo of VKs at the crease, you would have probably promoted a Jadeja ahead to do a left right, left right combination, backed by KL and Sky. So it becomes like a complementary. One guy could hit the ball, one guy could play the anchor role. RK Rohit Sharma could uh, hit the ball, Shubman uh, could play the anchor role. So it had we had the combination. We did not, I mean, had Hardik been there, great. But I don't think we 
lost the match because we missed an additional batter or a bowler. I don't, in my opinion, I don't think that is the case. I think we lost it by being out thought by the opposition more than, and of course, more being out thought, you were therefore outplayed. You know what I'm saying? So, I discussed about are we ready for the global culture? I discussed about how being out thought tactically cost us the game. Let me also talk about a little bit about the pressure that some of us fans put on the team and build them up without really and show them when things are not going their way. And many a times, and I, some of the other fans will say it's far better than what it was, say, 15 years ago or many years ago when you know there were instances of stone building some of the players' houses and team buses and all that stuff. That is not a true cricket lover. So I'm guessing that is uh, not happening, but social media wise, we create such an uproar that the actions are just uncontrollable. Of course, you have a right to feel bad about your team uh, not making it uh, to the final cup. Um, nothing wrong with feeling uh, or processing that emotion out. It need not turn into abuses. Need not turn into uh, hate speeches against them, their families, extended families. So, if this is the mindset, then are we truly ready to be called as a global team? And so, when I reflect on this campaign, the match, and of course, the match, fortunately, the match that mattered the most is the final. I, w I was discussing the, with um, a couple of people that, you know, the hawa, I don't know what's the English word for it, or, or the hoopla that went on. So, oh my God, we have uh, in, in the top four. I look at it slightly more pragmatically for probably the top four properly, proper or top five proper play, cricket playing nations. Getting into the final four would is is normal not getting it would have been an exception as it happened sometime back so i always knew that you would make it to the top four the proper cricket lover would always tell you the same story that the last two matches were always going to be the one that you needed to win both literally and mentally in, in the format so designed to entertain, to compete, and I think it, it has to, I am a, a fan of grueling series, like a World Cup. It has to be earned hard, like five teams play here and five teams play there, and some of the best teams don't ever meet each other. That's not, I mean, that's not good. It has to be a grueling exercise. And unless you get to say how FIFA is 48 nations and all, with us, this time 10 nations of which four or five are there to be there at times. Uh, and, and they are probably doing little better than what their previous versions did. Okay. Not a serious threat, right? So it wasn't a tension building, anticipating exercise. If you could have played little above average cricket and got into the semis. The big deal was to get past the semis. Against New Zealand, you anchored down. You played the template, you've gone past the semis. That was a big jinx breaker. That was a big momentum breaker. If you go look back to the uh, T20 World Cup in Australia, I think, where the match against Pakistan, which was a humbling of a match, gave such a boost, such a hum. My assessment at the time was that did the momentum come too quickly? That we still have a way to go. And as it turned out, we faltered there. As it turned out, in this edition, I don't think we peaked too early or too late. Or My thing is, there was a lot of noise being created about the victories and all that, and the thumping win in the 50th century. And you were like, uh, I will make sure I am writing a script which is now in my control, and I'll write glory in my, with my own hands. But destiny, as it turns out, always has other plans and a completely different script. 
And so the idea in finals, therefore, was to, the most common sense thing to do was to replicate template. And we will, and I just, I think, tweeted this sometime back. If and when Mr. Rohit Sharma decides to write a book on his World Cup campaign as a captain, the last chapter would be who said it or who dug it or who done it. It would be a thriller best setup. Clearly, there is someone who decided that using a pitch that has been used, played before, is the best idea to win. And that was probably backed by other people who could not counter logic then. And so it's, I, I really want to know the name of this person, which no broadcaster will ever reveal or we will probably never get to know unless somebody does any kind of investigative journalism. But um, that that person, whoever's idea it was, uh, has to be accountable. I think it starts from there. The person, if it is a group of people, then they have to be put to the task in in the sense that please explain. You know, sometimes there is a stonewalling even in press conferences. The conversations are very pedestrian. How are you feeling? Where did it go wrong? All the what is discussed. The why is not discussed. You, oh, we played, we bowled uh, too many wides and uh, we scored a little under par. And we, yeah, we are seeing the match with you. We get it. The point is, why is it happening? Why did you as a skipper, whoever is the representative, allowed it to happen as a team or are you saying and you know the biggest argument the defense argument is in sport this happens so you will win some you lose some you know what we are asking as fans is of course the opposition can play better than you we get upset about the manner in which you lose now it will always be the case for an emotional nation that uh, Whenever we lose, we always find excuses. This was against us, that was against us. Had this been there, had that been there, we cannot just plainly, dryly accept that, yeah, we were not good enough. When they do accept that you are not good enough, we also would like to know why were you not good enough? You have the best facilities, infrastructure, training, psychological health, physical health, mental health. Financial help, all boxes checked. Where is that answer? And my sense is there will be no answer. Right? I don't know why I didn't play well. Like South Africa as a team would struggle to find the answer that why pressure gets to them in knockout matches. Or for that matter, our neighbors Pakistan would struggle to answer why the tag of being mercurial is still associated with them for greater part of the last 30 years or more. At all. Given one day they will play like, oh my God, and then they will play like, oh my God. There is no comparison, so there's no consistency, there's no method to this, and you, can, you don't know which team will turn up. And so these are unanswered questions, and we'll, we can of course put some method to the madness and say, this is the process, this is the structure, this is how it should be and all that. But I am only focusing on Indian cricket and the one where talented bunch of people missed an opportunity of a lifetime. A talented bunch of people just blew up a chance just because somebody ill-advised them on how to play a final. And in a country where so many cricket experts, gurus, and um, smart people all around. Why is it that somebody just could stand up and talk about the nation first instead of the records or worry about what will happen and glory and everything? Listen, we need a simple standard flat cricket play. Probability of uh, if you bat well, they will also bat well. But then you bowled well, and then you had to probably bowl delta x better 
than their volume. That was the syllabus. So I think when you add up all these aspects, you wonder what will change in a year's time. We have the T20 World Cup. What will change in 2027 if ODI powers that be continue to uh, allow ODI to happen? What will change in your world, right? So I don't know. I don't see a way out of it. Instead of growing the sport at the grassroots level from 10 teams to becoming 100 teams, we are actually becoming just three or four teams, uh, uh, making a lot of money. So therefore, if businessmen and politicians are always going to be running the show, the sporting element will continue to go down. My sense is, have we reached an inflection point where the system collapses? We reached a snapping point. And if not, why not? Or is it time for us to probably invest our passion as sport lovers into, say, badminton, into javelin, into athletics, into football? I mean, what wrong has Mr. Sunil Chetri done? And he's doing a fabulous job for Indian football. And so why is it that we are not refocusing? Because the moment as a as a mass audience we start to refocus to hockey, to football, immediately there'll be a course correction on the other side. Because this part is always taken for granted that oh you are 140 million uh, 1.4 billion people. So we can always give them Churan, uh, the English version of Churan is um, some kind of a digestive, you know, like whatever you give, they will take and consume. All we have to do is add a bit of dash and, you know, the amount of uh, distraction that it, it's become like a discotheque in the field. Uh, an intense global competition is going on. You cannot make it sound like a domestic IPL match, which is for entertainment largely as defined. This is a serious global tournament. Why would you not give it that respect? Of course, people can, the audience can make noise, they can play their drums, they can play music, but every over, every opportunity in between, and it's such partisanship that when uh, the opposition did well, there wasn't as many drums or shouting or screaming. You want to rile up the crowd, and you know, do the nationalism story of uh, getting the national songs being played on their matram and everything. It's a sporting encounter between two teams. Let's stick to sports. Of course, that doesn't mean that I'm not proud of uh, you know the national sentiment and uh, none of that stuff. Of course, I am. But the point is, in a global sport, let's just enjoy the sporting encounter, appreciate the finer nuances and our players are left alone to focus on the game and their opinions, their understanding matters and when they falter then they should be open enough to come and have the real conversation. In fact, I, would, I was in, in my limited interaction with some of the cricketers, uh, ex-cricketers uh, in various travel experiences. I've often asked them and requested them, and if any of you are listening to this, is to do a top 10 questions, top 10 tough questions on Indian cricket, which are never asked on a press conference or a broadcast or on any of the media or anything. What are the top 10 questions? Love to hear that episode in depth, in detail. No more jabo straight talk. There's so many things, the stakes are so high, so much of stuff that is riding on it. My sense is that episode will never come. And that's a wrap for this episode, friends. Um, that I, it's very difficult, right? Uh, for us who have watched cricket for a fairly reasonably long time, the 2003 defeat was very hard in, because uh, in the way we lost, the Champions Trophy final defeat was hard, but that world and then lost to Pakistan. So and for me, I knew that was more of a cricketing uh, fluke, whereas the 2003 defeat was a comprehensive defeat. They just took you out on all parts, as simple as that. And for a 
pride-filled youngster that your team has now reached the finals in foreign shows and you're on a roll and momentum, it's the newfound aggression and all that. It was like a thud, like you just ran into chaos. <laughs> it was that kind. Uh, so that image doesn't go out of uh, many of our minds. And so after that, this loss is very close. That we just got thudded. Uh, the pitch this time, not hit us. So, but uh, I hope all of you heal and not troll and not he heap abuses at the players. They did what they did. You don't know. I can always say we don't know what we don't know. And uh, so I will still back them. I will still pray for them. And uh, I will hope that whatever the next uh, multi global tournament is, we as a audience appreciate, if it is in India specifically, we appreciate and display a much more mature version of ourselves. I, I think we are good then, much better than what sometimes that the media would like us to believe, especially across the border. They are waiting, I mean, they, they are waiting for us to fall and falter and everything that we do, even on the stuff that we do, right, they find the fault in it. Right? So if the times we fail, it's a national holiday. Right? It's like a, but that is not our competition or they are not our competition. So I, we don't even want to equate or respond or react to it. It's like, yeah, okay, you want to enjoy in your own bliss and discuss why the toss is falling five meters apart and not uh, <laughs> outrageous uh, commentary or even dignify it with a response or a comment. But for us, I think we have to elevate ourselves globally and become global sporting citizens. Leave you with the thought. Love some of your thoughts and comments on this kind of content. If you do think this made sense to you, please upvote this video so that more and more people can see it. Until we meet the next time, stay well, stay safe, and keep listening to INSMs. This is your host, I am wishing you a great day ahead.